Good day to all our viewers. I have been the editor of Embassy Direct for the past five years. When I joined Embassy Direct, its owner and founder, Ron McKenzie, described it as a deliverer of good news. In this segment, to bring you that good news, we engage with different role players of our society who will share their life experiences and how, through their actions, they are making a difference within their communities. Our guest today is Mr. Mike Abel. Mr. Abel is the founder of Maxashi Group. How are you, Mr. Abel, this morning? All good, thank you. Thank you for inviting me to talk to you today. Our pleasure. Kindly describe your organization and your role in it. So we are a marketing and communications group of companies, uh, the MNC Saatchi Group. We are in partnership with the, um, MNC Saatchi, the PLC in London, and we have a diversified group of companies in South Africa spanning um, public relations, marketing consultancies, advertising agencies, sports marketing companies, media companies, um, and uh, basically we either work separately or we collaborate around problem solving for our clients. And what's your role in it? So I am the co-founder and CEO of the group of companies, and uh, I work with um, a number of very close partners across the group. We employ about 375 people in South Africa across uh, six different operating divisions. South Africa has had a challenging times. How is your organization making a positive difference? Mention how others can get involved and support your own efforts. So I think the key thing when we started the MNC Saatchi Able Group of Companies was we were determined to be active citizens, to make a positive contribution to society way beyond the uh, commercial aspects of our business. Um, and we call those our force for good initiatives. So when we see a problem in our country, and as you alluded, there are many, we run towards the problem. We don't run away from it. And so very often corporates, because they have a commercial mindset, um, they are concerned primarily by the bottom line of the company uh, and making profits. We are concerned about being um, committed citizens to uplifting our country uh, and to making a, a very positive difference in many people's lives outside of our, our company. So we get involved in many initiatives. We started a global movement to clothe the homeless and the poor called the Street Store. We've clothed well over half a million people around the world. Unfortunately, with COVID today, we're not able to host those street stores. Uh, but I encourage your viewers to go onto uh, YouTube and to read it, watch the video on the street store, and you'll see how uh, you can host them. And uh, they've uh, happened all around the world in many different far-flung cities. And then we get involved um, with a number of different organizations, be it in um, uh, AIDS orphanages, uh, be it shelters for abused women and children, be it providing bursaries, be it providing food for people in need in uh, villages that are affected through violence. There are many different aspects in terms of how we get involved um, in making a difference. Many of us have had the opportunity to reflect on the pandemic and its impact. May you share key takeaways and anything you have learned over the past months? Yes, I think one of the key things, uh, you know, the day that we closed the agency to go into lockdown, we put a sign on our door which said, our doors may be closed, but our minds remain open. And I think what we've done with that is we have tried to shift our business and very effectively as it happens, considering we've only had about 20% of our staff working from the agency at most in the past 18 months. So 80% of the people have been working from home. And what COVID did was it gave us an opportunity to test and trial um, an output-based strategy as opposed to an input-based strategy. So where geography, physical geography is less important um, through necessity, I guess, where we don't need to all be sitting in an office 
uh, but where we can uh, collaborate like you and I are right now over the screen and work together. And we have major clients in, uh, in uh, the country and further abroad. Um, and we've been able to service those clients very effectively uh, in a new world. Now, those are things that um, wouldn't have happened, I guess, without uh, the calamity of a, of a pandemic. Um, and I think the other thing that we focused a lot on is also understanding more, I guess, people's um, mental needs, uh, you know, being um, more human and more compassionate, not necessarily our company, but a lot of the companies that we collaborate with in terms of understanding the importance of people's mental health and the universality of mankind. You know, a lot of us tend to live in our companies or in our silos. And I think that this has knocked down the walls and we're focusing a lot more on our common humanity and our common purpose. So those are just some of the observations. Thanks. What do you believe are South Africa's main challenges? And could you touch on some of the solutions you would like to see implemented? Yes, so I think our number one challenge by far um, is economic growth. The country suffers from a 70% youth unemployment rate and a 35 plus percentage average unemployment. And you can never heal a country and you can never build a country where you have such catastrophic levels of unemployment. Now, the only way to solve unemployment is economic growth, is to be in an environment where uh, individuals where local and foreign domestic, local investment and foreign investment comes into the country. And if people are going to invest money in a country, they need to see return on investment. So you need stability. You need policies and practices that encourage investment. Um, you need, um, you know, stability in terms of the socioeconomic compact of people within a country. So there are many different things that we need to look at in terms of um, uh, how to stimulate economic growth. And, uh, and that's our number one challenge, because we won't get ourselves out of the cycle of poverty unless we grow. It's the only way out. There is no other way out of uh, unemployment other than economic growth. And then the other thing is, for corporates in South Africa, for business in South Africa, to develop much more of an inclusive economy and a sharing culture, to bring much more people into the economy. And then to start looking at creative ways, Rodrigo, of people um, developing um, skills that are not necessarily uh, rely on education, but are easy skills to start developing in terms of becoming handymen, in terms of being able to become subsistence farmers. Um, and I think that that is a, a way the country needs to start growing. You know, there's been a huge focus on urbanization, people moving from rural areas to urban areas. And that has created a, a lot of poverty and that has created a lot of uh, crime. And I think that people need to be encouraged to live in, uh, the rural areas, to go back to learning farming methods and to start building up the country towns that have, you know, around the world, we've seen our country towns have been abandoned for the big cities. I think with technology today and with opportunities today, it's time to rebuild those villages and country towns and spread out the population. But the most important thing we can do is subsistence farming, I reckon. I would like to add for to what you said about, about education and, and development of skills. Actually, South Africa itself has already established uh, industries, uh, mining, farming, tourism, manufacturing, uh, film industry, uh, and so many others. Yes. It's not that we need to create the will. Actually, it's bringing all these people, all these unemployed people, and get them on board on each of these working platforms, whereby the industries can, can probably uh, create programs uh, to both um, um, train uh, the, the, these <clears throat> masses of people to, 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 to join you know, the, the, the working force. Sometimes we rely excessively in government and government, we, we must uh, perceive it as a management of the country. Uh, they cannot be expected to be an employment company, a hiring company. So that is something that I, I, I think to what you said, I think it's very important 
that w that one must must look into. Absolutely. How, yeah. how can excellent leadership in South Africa improve the country's perception globally? And how do you foresee this helping citizens? So I think one of the great challenges right now is for government to understand that business can play an invaluable role in helping them shift the perception of the country, the skills, the export opportunities, um, the import opportunities, and many other things. At the moment, what you often see within a government is, um, I guess, people are put in positions in South Africa, certainly because they are career politicians, not because they necessarily have the capability in running their very large portfolios, multi-billion dollar portfolios. And you need capable people in those positions. Otherwise, what you need to do is to partner with private business and let private business help you in terms of growing and encouraging and fostering development. Um, and I think that only through developing these partnerships will we be able to grow the economy the way we should be growing them. So that's a big challenge right now is for government to internalize this and to have the epiphany. And then the other thing that we need to do urgently is we need to develop um, uh, partnerships that are collaborative and where uh, we start ending parasitic partnerships with countries that come in here and try and shop us cheap and try and get our minerals and get, try and take over land and whatever at the lowest possible rate, as opposed to countries that are committed to growing together with us, to us both doing well, as opposed to only that country that comes in here doing well. And so I think it does really uh, require a relook at who we do business with and how we do business with them, and do they have South Africa's best interests at heart? Because what we're trying to do in South Africa, as you know, is overcome a tragic past. We've only been a democracy for about 27 years in South Africa, and there's a lot of growth. And so there's a lot of opportunity for the wrong players to come into South Africa and to strip us bare of our resources and our labor. That's not the challenge. The challenge is to come and invest in South Africa and for us to do well and for those countries and businesses to do well. Uh, adding to what you said, Mike, I think politics and populism must be replaced by meritocracy. That should be the way to, to, Absolutely. to, to reward people. Here. And do you have hope for South Africa's future? And if so, why? I have a lot of faith in South Africa's future for many, uh, many reasons. One is we've just seen a former president be arrested and go to jail for contempt of court. Now, in many countries around the world, that would never happen. There'd be a presidential pardon. There would be excuses. You know, Jacob Zuma has gone to jail. That is where he is right now, albeit now um, in, uh, in hospital. We have seen we have a commission at the moment looking into um, corruption in South Africa called the Zondo Commission, which is looking into every nook and cranny in terms of corruption that's gone on in the past decade. We have an independent and powerful um, law uh, um, uh, legal system and judiciary. We have an independent and powerful uh, press. Uh, we have freedom of speech. Then if you have a look at our businesses, we have a very sound and capable manufacturing uh, capability. We make the most sophisticated cars in the world uh, for companies uh, from South Africa to export. Um, so there's that capability over here. We've got the most beautiful country in the world in terms of attracting tourism. We have got uh, unbelievable infrastructure in South Africa, as you know, in every way, it's a first world country with third world problems. It's not a third world country with first world aspirations, you know? So there's a huge amount that we can do from here. Um, we have got a very good uh, financial systems in, in the country. We have got, we are early adopters when it comes to technology. We've got 96% to 99% mobile phone penetration in South Africa, despite poverty, in terms of connectivity. Our banking is at the world's best in terms of uh, the banks that we have in our systems. So I believe that there's a huge opportunity, Rodrigo, to if we could just start tackling with complete focus unemployment and crime in South Africa. And as we know, the two of them are inextricably linked. 
If we can start solving that, I believe that we can absolutely unlock a magnificent future for this country. Mike, we would love to feature your positive input on our website and trust you, you are keen to spread the word. Absolutely. Very happy with that. Thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate uh, your insights. Uh, and actually, I look up to you as a, as a business person and as, as, a, as a citizen, because that's the attitude that every single person within our community should be. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. Great to chat to you. Thanks.